for more on this, uh, you know, the PIA, which is, you know, drumming up a lot of controversy. We're now being joined by Oji Ogbonaya Oji, who is the Executive Secretary of the Nigerian Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. That's NATI. Thank you so much for being here, Dr. Oji. Really much. appreciate you for Thank coming you. through. Let's, a good place to start this conversation with this act that has just been assented to by Mr. President is the fact that NATI, your mandate, you're big on transparency. And lack of transparency has always been an issue with the petroleum industry in Nigeria. So let's talk about some of the opaqueness, you know, in that industry. And are you satisfied with this PIA as it is right now? Well, yes, Dum, um, I must say that um, what happened in the whole process that eventually came to an end with the presidential assent is quite historic. And we did say so with sense of uh, every sense of um, uh, commitment and patrioti patriotism in terms of the kind of um, effort that has been put into this process. Remember, um, 90, Nigeria joined the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative in 2003 and um, began implementation in 2004. And the first report NIT conducted, independent report that NIT conducted, covered the period 1999 to 2004. That was a that report that NATI flagged a red card that um, one of our findings was that there was no law governing this sector except the Petroleum Act of 1969. So between 1969 and 1999, there was no law. All you had were either guidelines or regulations or authority or what kinds of policy, but none of them was anchored on specific law. So we found out that it was very strange for an industry that governs the um, Nigerian econ economy that actually underpins Nigerian economy. And we began that process. So this law now is as old as Nati. Mm. It began, the advocacy began in 2004. And I'm, I am really very, um, I'm concerned about the aggregation of interest. And this same inability to aggregate interest had held this law for over 80 years. Yeah. Okay. How, how do you manage the interests of the civil society? How do you manage the interests of the investors? How do you manage the interests of the companies? How do you aggregate the in interests of the civil society and government, including the citizens themselves, within and outside the country on this specific? That's what held the law. So the only way not to step on toes is to stand still. Once you make a move, you must step on something. Yeah. So, and I'm aware that this law, just as any other law I'm familiar with, cannot be perfect. But we must, we must have to move forward. Start somewhere, and right. that is why, if there's anybody who should take credit, it should go to President Muhammad Buhari for the political will, courage to get this thing done. Right. We can move forward because there are opportunities for, let's put the law into practice, there are opportunities for amendments. Okay. So, and instead of um, being in decades of uncertainty forever. All right. I'm a Nigerian. I come from one of the oil producing states and I completely agree with some of the sentiments made, but I do not think that this kind of sentiments can hold us down for over 80 years without making progress. Naiti is so happy and, and relieved that um, the law is the, in place. Yeah, the law is in All place. All right. Uh, now that the implementation framework is in place, you know, to kick off the pro process, what next? What are your expectations? And one would like you to say really what Nate's place as far as the PA is concerned really is. I do think that the, the first thing, the first step should be to anchor implementation on the general principles of EITI, Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, which is clear. Transparency, accountability, professionalism, openness, competition, fair play, level playing ground to manage our oil, oil assets. If you do that, you if you put this template, AI template in place, you will see that revenue flows into the sector will be huge to address our challenges of insecurity, oh. our, our, our kind of infrastructure that we need, free resources to be able to address poverty, access to education, schools, and all that. It's not, it's not something about sentimental. The structure of the country must also be considered in the way and manner these things are. But I think the most important thing is that we're moving forward now. 
Uh, but moving forward is one thing, but another aspect of it we have to look at, which is, you know, what I want to focus really on NATO's mandate mm -hmm. on transparency, which is what you're big on, and the fact that corruption has been a major challenge. Some would say that's the reason why we're still struggling with our development as a nation. How far reaching do you think will this act be to really help us fight corruption in the petroleum industry? This act that we looked at, the, I looked at the bill. Quite frankly, I'm yet to see the copy that the president signed into law. And everybody, including me, have sent messages around, I would like to see it like today. But in the general principles of the bill that I was part of those who looked at, the legal framework for me is clear. The governance and regulatory fr framework regime is clear. For now, you have we are going to have two standing independent regulatory authorities. One for the upstream and one for the midstream and, one and downstream. Midstream and downstream. And downstream. You, also, you have also specifics in terms of the regime of the financial, the financial regime that governs the sector. You have specific clarity on administration. There are provisions for the host communities, which was not something that was left to the conscience of or your community, or your uh, companies before. It can be more for the host communities, I agree, but at least there is something to begin to debate for. I think the argument towards that area, for me, um, is on prudent management of what is available. No matter how much you provide, and there is no accountability, and prudent management of those resources, will still go back to where we are. And I'm happy that even in provision for the host communities, there is a trust fund that is created, which I also know, have also made provisions for very reputable Nigerians, some of whom may not necessarily come from those communities to manage them. And even in the disbursement of those kind of funding, emphasis is on capital projects up to 70% and then 20% for other services. What has happened in the past that this kind of provisions made for these real communities that need these funds, hardly get there. And we know it hardly gets to those communities. Probably and then projects are designed huh. completely outside need assessment, what they need. So I, I agree with the, the argument that it could be more, but if you wait for, to aggregate all these interests, we will come, this law will never come to be. So, and this law lasted over 80 years. And if, we, if by 18 years you were not able to manage this interest more, how many years more do we wait? All right. So uh, I think, um, I think uh, we're making, we've made progress. Progress. And uh, we need to build on what is, is, is on ground. There is clarity on administration of the sector. There is clarity on a, a strong legal framework is on ground, unlike before. There is clarity on the fiscal regime. There is some provision. I use the word some oh. provision for host communities. Right, and we'll, we'll, we'll you it, also we'll it, have we'll an independent we'll regulatory time. framework. Thank you so, so much. It's not a so perfect much. law, Oji, but of course a good Obonaya, step in the right direction. Oji, Executive Secretary, Nigeria Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative. Thank you so much.